The story begins with Suzune Inakami, the student council president, and Kazuki Ryusen, the vice president, strolling through the school corridors, attracting the admiration of fellow students who speculate on their relationship. The pair, seen as cool, is rumored to make a perfect couple. Meanwhile, we see Ken Yusato, an ordinary and forgettable student, who dreams for an extraordinary life. On a rainy day, Yusato discovers his umbrella missing, and as he decides to wait out the rain, Suzune approaches him. She doesn't want Yusato to be sent out in the rain as it will damage the reputation of the student council, and just then Kazuki shows up, offering to lend Yusato his spare umbrella. They walk home together, and Yusato is surprised at the unexpected company of the school's most popular students. During the journey, Yusato notes Kazuki's friendliness, and is surprised, as he thought that he was a playboy who only spoke to girls. Suzune teases Kazuki that other boys don't like talking to him, but Yusato mentions that Suzune is even less approachable, as she's seen as the most popular girl who is not only pretty, but has exceptional academic and athletic achievements. Yusato then asks them if they are dating, and they both deny it, explaining their extensive time together is only because of the student council responsibilities. Yusato apologizes for being so direct, but Suzune takes this as a compliment, as she prefers direct inquiries over gossip. The trio discusses future plans, but Yusato doesn't have any, and Suzune too mentions that she doesn't have any plan of her own. She doesn't know what she wants to do in life, and sometimes she feels like she doesn't belong in this world. Suzune and Kazuki notice the sound of ringing bells, but Yusato can't hear anything. Just then, a magical circle appears below them, and Yusato wonders if this is a gateway to another world. Suzune gets excited hearing this, and she wonders if they would find magic heroes and monsters in this new world, leaving Yusato baffled by her enthusiasm. The scene shifts to Yusato waking up, and asks Kazuki about their location and the people in front of them. Kazuki doesn't have any idea, and Suzune seems happy to be transported, shocking Yusato. Just then, King Lloyd introduces himself as the King of Linger. He reveals their summoning as desperate measures against a demon lord invasion two years ago, and Suzune is even more excited to learn that they were summoned as heroes. The king requests their aid as the demon lord's army has been expanding, but Kazuki protests, and demands to be sent back. However, the king tells him that summoning ritual works in one-way direction, so it's not possible to go back, which makes Kazuki more aggressive, but the guards stop him. Yusato calms him down, and the king along with everyone begs them for help. He promises to find a way to send them back home in future, and refer to them as heroes. Suzune questions their hero status, as they know nothing about them. A mage named Welsi explains that the summoning magic selects the most accomplished individuals, and asks them if they heard any bells ringing. Just then, Yusato realizes that he didn't hear anything, which means that he just got dragged into this. After that, Welsi prepares a magic crystal to check their abilities, and Kazuki questions Yusato's feelings about being summoned. Yusato is fine as Welsi told him that he'll be able to use magic, and he's glad that they're treating him the same even though he's not a hero. Welsi finishes her preparation, and the magic crystal reveals Suzune's affinity for thunder magic, and Kazuki's for light magic. When it comes to Yusato, the ball glows in green color, and Welsi is shocked to see this. She then drags him to the king to tell him about his unique situation. The king is surprised to hear this, and suggests keeping him away from the castle. Yusato wonders if no one else has the same ability as him, and the king mentions there is someone, but he has a terrifying expression on his face. Just then, a woman named Rose appears, and everyone is terrified to see her. She sees Yusato, and King tells her that he's just an ordinary boy. She introduces herself as the captain of the kingdom's rescue team, and Yusato thinks that she looks like someone who takes lives rather than saving them. Welsi then persuades her to take them to the heroes, and as she's about to leave, Yusato asks the king about the green color. After learning about the green color, Rose decides to take him away, and the king asks Welsi to keep him away from Rose. 
Welsi uses her magic to get Yusato out of there, but Rose chases after him, and manages to capture him. She tells the king that she'll turn Yusato into a full-fledged healing magic user, and leaves with him. Later, Welsi explains the situation to Suzune and Kazuki, who worry about Yusato, but Welsi mentions that he was only taken to the rescue team beyond the castle town. She explains that the crystal ball indicated that Yusato had an affinity for rare healing magic, the same as Rose, so she intends to train him under her. Suzune thinks it should be fine, but Welsi mentions that Rose has some unorthodox teaching method, and worries about Yusato. After that, we see Yusato at the rescue team's lodgings, and finds out that he's a healing magic user. Rose then calls her subordinates, and they all come running. They greet him, and Yusato gets scared by their terrifying appearance. Rose kicks one of them, and asks them not to scare him. She then explains that her subordinates are not healing magic users, and although they have two magic users on their team, they work elsewhere. She's determined to teach Yusato healing magic, and tells him that his training will start tomorrow. She asks him to share a room with one of her subordinates named Tong, and after she leaves, the subordinates mention that he's screwed as Rose is training him directly. Later at night, Yusato is worried about his future, while Rose is looking forward to seeing how it will turn out. As the story continues, we see Yusato waking up, and realizing that he is really in another world, and it's not a dream. Just then, he's informed that he has some guests, and it's Suzune and Kazuki. They were worried about him as they heard he had been abducted, but Yusato mentions that he's fine, and realizes that today his training will begin. Yusato has decided to go through with it, hoping that he would be of some use. He then sees their uniform, and wonders what kind of cool training they get to do. Kazuki is inspired by Yusato, and they decide to give their best in this new world. They leave, and Yusato hopes to grow strong enough to support them. After that, Rose appears, and Yusato thanks her for giving the chance to chat with his friends, but Rose mentions that he's not in prison, so he is free to see anyone when he's not training under her. Rose then gives him a journal, and asks him to keep a record of his daily training. They will start the training after breakfast, and Yusato wonders what kind of training he will be doing. We then see him starting his training, and he thinks that it is easier than he expected. He's learning to feel his mana, and his next task is to draw it out after he controls it. Rose then shows him a book, and asks him to read. Yusato mentions that he can't read the language of this world, but to his surprise he's able to read it when he opens it, and Rose reveals that all heroes have Google Translation pre-installed in them. She then explains the geography of this world to Yusato. He finds out that the Demon Territory and Linger Kingdom are right next to each other. Rose tells him that this is why the kingdom is the first target of the demons, and asks him to read the book to get the basic info about nations, different races, and demons of this world. As his training continues, he narrates that on day two he ran a lot which was different from what he expected. On day three, he was forced to run until his legs gave out. Rose slaps his legs, and he screams in pain, but realizes that it doesn't hurt anymore. She tells him that she healed his sore muscle, and asks him to keep running. On day 4, Yusato starts training with other members, and all of them are faster than him, leaving him a lap behind. On day 5, he ran all day again, and on day 6 it was raining, but he's still running. He falls down, and Rose asks him to keep going. He thinks that Rose is being too harsh, but then he notices the light of healing magic coming from his hand. On day 7, he ran again until he thought he'd die, and then got his ass kicked by Rose. On day 8, the same thing happened, but on day 9 he noticed that the healing light has healed him, and he's as good as new. On day 10, now that he can manifest healing magic, he doesn't get tired no matter how much he runs but he thinks that all he does is running, and wonders if he'll be able to help his friends. On day 11, he also needs to do push-ups along with running, and Rose tells him that he's training like this so that he can run away from an enemy, and also to save his injured allies as fast as possible. On day 12, he ran until afternoon, 
and did push-ups till night. On day 13, he ran with weights, and on day 14, he noticed that his lunch was missing. He learns that it was eaten by Tong, and chases after him at full speed to beat him without realizing that he's wearing weights. It's now day 21, and we see Kazuki and Suzune, along with a knight and princess, come to visit him, and they are shocked to see him doing push-ups with Rose sitting with a weight on his back. Rose then continues to put on another weight on his back, but he still manages to endure it, shocking both Suzune and Kazuki. Suzune seems to be loving the muscles he has built, but the knight named Siglis gets mad at Rose for such a brutal training. She tells him that she has her own way of doing things, and Yusato will become her right-hand man. Yusato is shocked to hear this, and she mentions that she loves how he never gives up. Sigils then mentions that he needs to talk to Rose in private, and the rest of the group leave them alone. Sigils tells her that he was told to enlist her back, but seeing her brutal treatment he doesn't want to, and Rose tells him that she doesn't want it anyways, as her eye is useless. Later, Yusato finds out that Sigils commands the army of the Linger Kingdom, and he is the strongest knight in the kingdom. He's also teaching Kazuki and Suzune sword fighting. Yusato wonders about the little girl, and she introduces herself as Celia Volgast Linger, princess of this kingdom. He bows down to her, but she tells him that he doesn't need to be formal with her. After that, they enjoy the treat that Celia has brought them, and they discuss their training. Kazuki mentions that their training is difficult, but Sigil and Welsi always considered their health and well-being while teaching them to use swords and magic. Yusato mentions that Rose's training is brutal, but just then, Suzune lifts his shirt up to check out his physique, and she's rizzed by his six-packs abs. Kazuki wonders if it's really tough for Yusato, and he tells them that initially it was tough, but now the training is starting to get fun. Also, he wants to help them, when they fight as heroes. Just then, Tong brings Yusato his lunch, but Yusato hasn't forgiven him for stealing his lunch, and they start fighting, while others think that it's part of his daily life, and he's living freely as himself. Later, we see Yusato taking a bath, and feels happy seeing his friends. Suzune's behavior did freak him out, but he thinks that she was right, as his body has really changed, and thinks that it could be because of him using his healing magic to heal his damaged muscles repeatedly. He thinks that he needs to save lives on the battlefield, and wonders if he can do it. The following day, Rose takes him to a forest, and tells him that he needs to hunt down a grand grizzly before he can come back. He recalls that according to the book he read, blue grizzlies are terrifying beasts who turn into grand grizzlies after 100 years. Rose tells him that he should be able to take one down easily, and throws him into the forest. As he's falling down, he thinks he'll die at this rate, and casts healing magic on himself. The trees also cushion his fall, and he manages to land on the ground safely with minor injuries. He heals himself, and thinks he can't go back unless he takes down a grand grizzly. He's determined, and thinks that a two-meter tall bear shouldn't be a big deal. Just then, a grand grizzly appears, and he starts running. While running he thinks that it's bigger than he thought, but thinks that it can't match his speed. To his surprise, it's still right behind him, and he decides to take it one-on-one, -on -one, as he has gone through much worse during his training. However, he notices that there are a pair of blue grizzlies as well, so he starts running again, and he jumps onto a waterfall to stop the grizzlies from chasing him. After that, we see him drying his clothes on the trees, and checking out his supplies. He thinks that Rose should have given him something to start a fire with, and thinks that she is a demon. He eats some of his emergency food, and thinks that taking down Grand Grizzly seems like an impossible task, but for now he's glad to survive the day. The next day, he decides to learn more about his enemy first, and goes out scouting to find where it lives. During scouting, he notices something in the bushes, but it's just a rabbit. He notices that it's injured, and he heals it. He continues his scouting, but notices the rabbit following him around. He wonders if the rabbit knows about the grizzly's location, and the rabbit signals to follow him. 
The rabbit leads him to the Grand Grizzly's den, and Yusato decides to spy on them. The next day, he collects some river water, but he's worried about drinking unboiled water. Afterwards, he continues to spy on the grizzlies, and thinks that blue grizzlies are cute. The day after he gets a bad stomach ache due to the water, and even his healing magic isn't working quickly on this. He thinks he needs to find a way to solve his water problem, and just then, the rabbit shows up. It guides him to a clear water lake, and as he drinks it, he thinks that it's delicious. He then notices that the rabbit seems worried, and wonders if a monster is coming towards them. Yusato thinks that rabbit wasn't this afraid when he saw the grand grizzly, and then he notices a giant white snake. He hasn't read about anything like that, but he can still tell that it's dangerous, and decides to stay away from it. After that, four days pass, and he still continues to spy on the grizzlies. He thinks that watching them warms his heart, but he can't go home without defeating that grand grizzly, and decides to challenge it the next day. The following day, it's raining, and the rabbit tries to stop him from going, so he decides to stay until the rain stops. After the rain stops, he decides to challenge the grand grizzly, but gets shocked when he finds out that both the grand and blue grizzlies are dead. He thinks that it must be done by the giant snake, and realizes that it wasn't killing to eat, but just killing for fun. He finds out that the baby grizzly has survived the attack, and it tries to wake up its parents. Yusato thinks that he hates losing, and that his prey was stolen, but what he hates the most is seeing the baby grizzly cry over its parents. He tells the baby grizzly that he'll take revenge for him, and leaves, but the baby grizzly decides to track the scent of the snake. Meanwhile, we see Kazuki and Suzune checking on Yusato, but they find out that he has been training in the forest for the past 10 days. Kazuki gets worried, and Tong tells him that Rose is the one who decides everything here, so they can't do anything about this. Later, as they walk back, Suzune mentions that she too is worried, but Rose is the one making him do this, and also she believes in Yusato, so it should be fine. We then see Yusato preparing to fight the giant snake, and he makes himself a weapon. He asks the rabbit to take him to the snake, and tells it to run away after showing him the way. The rabbit takes him to the snake, and as they reach there, Yusato is shocked to see the baby grizzly heavily injured after fighting the snake. He thinks that this snake is dangerous, but Rose is scarier than this. He launches a surprise attack on the snake, and he manages to stab its eye. The snake pushes him aside using its tail, and he tries to attack it from its blind side, but the snake manages to bite his arm. Yusato realizes that the snake baited him, but he had the knife in his arm, so he stabs inside of the snake's mouth. He realizes that he's been poisoned, but thinks that he knows how to heal due to the stomach ache he got earlier, and he just has to heal from the inside. He then continues to fight, and the snake tries to attack him with its tail, but the blue grizzly stops its tail. Yusato uses this chance to punch the snake with all his might, and pushes the spear deeper, which finally kills it. The baby grizzly comes close to him, and he tells it that he got his revenge. He wants to heal it, but he has used up all his mana to neutralize the snake venom. Just then, he notices that the snake is still alive, but he can't get up. The baby grizzly tries to drag him away, but it's not strong enough. He asks the blue grizzly to leave him, and the snake tries to attack him. He thinks that this is it, and yells at Rose for this. Just then, Rose appears from the sky, and kicks down the snake to its death. It's revealed that the rabbit was her pet, and she has asked it to watch over him. He mentioned that it showed up injured, but learns that it was just an act to gain his trust. Rose mentions that she was always near him, and ready to step in if necessary. She tells him that this monster was created by the Demon Lord's army, and Sigils failed to finish it off during the last invasion, so it must have fled over here. She didn't expect it to kill the Grand Grizzly which is capable of taking down elite troops, and Yusato is shocked that she sent him to fight something like that. She says that her goal was for him to gain experience, and notices that the baby grizzly has taken a liking to Yusato. 
she orders the baby grizzly to come with them and carry Yusato. The grizzly carries Yusato, and Rose carries both of them. Later, Rose mentions that he has passed her test with flying colors, and now he has the right to stand beside her in the battlefield. He still hasn't mastered the basics, but he has the ability to withstand pain, physical aptitude and a strong mental state which the other two healers never earned. She tells him that they will make it and he wonders what she meant, and reveals that the demon army will be attacking them soon. We then see the demon lord asking his third army commander, Amila Vergrid about the Linger Kingdom invasion, and she reports that they are ready to advance soon. Meanwhile, Rose mentions that they are going to be a part of the vanguard, and he's going to be in the front lines with her. Yusato wonders about the other healers in their group, but Rose mentions that they have a different kind of job. Yusato isn't sure if he's up to it, but Rose asks him to utilize the time they have to improve himself. We then cut to the demon lord's castle where he asks Amila to lead their forces, and asks her to give her best. Amila then meets the demon doctor named Hiraluk, who show her his newest monster prototype. It looks just like the snake which was defeated by Yusato and Rose. He tells Amila that this is prototype 72, and it's called Baljinak. This is much stronger than his earlier prototype 71 which went missing after they attacked Linger Kingdom, and it fled after being injured by sigils. Amila tells him there are more troublesome people than sigils, who don't fight on the battlefield, but they carry the injured away to minimize their casualty. Their boss is a healer who runs around healing people on the spot in the front lines, and she is also a top-notch fighter. She holds some grudge against her master, and Amila hopes to kill her one day. Hiraluk mentions that she can't go into the battle as she's the commander this time, but Amila has a plan, and she intends to send the Black Knight. The scene cuts to Yusato waking up, and later, he gives the grizzly some fruits. He notices that the rabbit named Kukuru also wants some, but he refuses as it tricked him in the forest. However, he can't help it when he sees it making puppy dog eyes, and gives him some fruits as well. Just then Rose appears, and we learn that Yusato has named the grizzly Blurin. We learn that she has reported the bear to the king, and got the permission to keep it as the property of rescue team. She then tells the grizzly that he will have to earn his keep, and the grizzly gets scared seeing her face. Yusato wonders what she wants to do with it, and we then cut to Yusato carrying Blurin, and we learn that Rose has given him a simulation training similar to the battlefield, where he'll need to rescue the injured. Yusato then starts to run, and thinks that it's just running with more weight, which will just be a breeze if he manages his mana. As he runs, some of the Rose's men try to attack him, and they tell him that this is part of his training, as in the battlefield there will be enemies ready to ambush him, so he should always be on alert. As Yusato keeps running, he gets attacked in different ways, and even Kukuru is in on it as well. However, he manages to escape somehow, and keep running. Few hours pass, and he gets tired. He thought that he would be able to manage it for half a day, but got tired after a few hours. Just then, Rose appears and tells him that humans can feel exhaustion when they are nervous, afraid or impatient, this is why he got tired soon. She heals him, and tells him not to lose strength when facing fear, and tells him to run around the castle carrying Blurin. We then cut to Yusato running around the castle carrying Blurin, and at first the townspeople are surprised to see a blue grizzly, but they calm down when they notice that Yusato is from the rescue squad. Blurin then smells some delicious fruits, and they go to the fruit stall, but Yusato doesn't have any money. He asks the lady about the calm nature of people in the city, and she mentions that they can tell by his clothes that he's the member of the rescue team, and they're used to seeing scary-looking men running around all the time, so nothing surprises them anymore. He then tries to leave, and tells her that he'll buy fruits from her next time, but she gives a fruit for free. Blurin eats the fruit, and they leave. Yusato then thinks about visiting the castle to see his friends since he's so close. A blonde guy notices him, and tries to call him, but Yusato doesn't hear him. The guy runs after Yusato, and falls off. Yusato then finally notices him, 
and he learns that he's one of the healers on the rescue team. The guy introduces himself as Orga, and he's amazed to learn that Yusato is from another world. He is also impressed that Yusato is able to keep up with Rose's training, and tells him that he and his sister couldn't keep up with it. His sister is the other healer and she's five years younger than him. They run a clinic in the city, and they use their healing magic to heal the citizens. Yusato wonders why Orga collapsed earlier when he could have healed himself to which Orga tells him that he's only good at healing others, but not himself. However, he's still part of the rescue team, and they work under the captain to heal the injured soldiers in times of need. Yusato learns that Orga and his sister heals the injured people that Tong and others bring from the battlefield. Yusato then tells him that he's going to be part of the vanguard, and Orga tells him that the heroes and knight who fight on the front lines are always in the greatest danger, so if there are healers on the battlefield they can be saved. He thinks that being on the front line is a dangerous job, but if Rose chose him, it means that she trusts him. He asks Yusato not to hate her, but Yusato tells him that he doesn't hate her, although he has a bone or two to pick with her. As Yusato leaves, Orga thinks that Rose has finally managed to find someone, and just then, his sister Yururu shows up. She asks about Yusato, and Orga tells her that she'll find out about him soon, and he's sure that she'll like him. The scene then cuts to Yusato at the castle gates, where he's allowed to enter with the grizzly as Rose has vouched for the monster. Inside Yusato notices a bunch of knights having mock battles, and sees Suzune training. Suzune is mesmerized by Blurin and wants to pet him. Yusato tells her that Blurin is super tame, but when she tries to touch him, Blurin bites her. Yusato thinks that it's because she has a tainted soul, and just then, Blurin bites him as well, and Suzune thinks that his soul is tainted as well. After that, Yusato notices that Suzune's hands are full of blisters due to the sword training, and he uses his healing magic to heal her. Suzune wonders if he came here to see her, and is excited about the plot development. However, he mentions that he's here to see her and Kazuki. He learns that Kazuki is outside the kingdom to gain experience fighting monsters with sigils. Meanwhile, we see Kazuki, and he learns that the demon army is going to attack soon, but Sigil mentions that this time their offense will be stronger, as they have Kazuki and Suzune on their side. Kazuki tells him that he'll give his best, and they encounter some hang wolves. Meanwhile, Yusato hopes that Kazuki is fine, and Suzune mentions that when he returns, it will be her turn next. After a while Yusato leaves, and Suzune thinks that he has become more frank with her, and it's not such a bad feeling. Yusato then returns back, and thinks that his friends are working hard to prepare for the war, so he doesn't want to hide in safety while they are in danger. Back in his world he could only admire people who could do the things that he couldn't, but now, he is not the same person anymore. Later at night, Rose asks if Yusato has got used to his training. He tells her that he has, but he would like to train longer. He barely managed to survive against the snake monster, and he was terrified when Rose mentioned about the demon army, but today he found a feeling stronger than fear. Although he can't fight and kill anyone, he will still save his friends and anyone else that he can help as he's part of the rescue team. Rose is happy to hear this, and Yusato thinks that this is the first he felt that he was truly a member of the rescue team. The following day Rose wakes up Yusato, and she mentions that the king has asked Yusato to accompany Suzune on her training outside of the castle. As the story continues, we see Yusato heading to the castle with Rose, and he wonders why he has to join Suzune's training. Rose explains that he was supposed to join Kazuki's training as well, but Rose refused the request as he just returned from forest after his training. However, the king asked again, so this time she couldn't refuse it. Also, Yusato will be going with them in case they need a healer, and it's only for three days, so he should be fine. We then see him at the palace, and Suzune is surprised to see him along with Blurin. Suzune introduces her party mates who'll be joining them, they are Aruku the knight and Korin the mage. Yusato thinks that Aruku is familiar, and learns that he's the knight usually standing at the gate. 
Rose advises Suzune that Yusato's healing magic can heal wounds and cure poisons, but it can't bring people back to life, so she should not take it for granted. Rose has no advice for Yusato, and she wonders if he's dissatisfied, but Yusato is fine, as he knows she'll have nothing nice to say. Rose then leaves, and Suzune mentions that they should be going as well. We then see Kazuki doing some sword training, and Celia wonders if it's alright for him to train right now since he was tired after yesterday's training. Kazuki mentions that he is fine, and Celia gets embarrassed, realizing that she was touching him, and leaves. Meanwhile, Suzune informs Yusato about Kazuki's exhaustion after training, and mentions that he battled a ton of monsters in the darkness of Linger Forest. Suzune notices that Blurin is sleeping, so she attempts to pet him, but Yusato stops her. Just then Blurin wakes up, and Yusato asks it to walk, but Blurin walks in a drunken manner, and Suzune offers to carry him. However, Blurin ends up on top of her, and she gets hurt. Yusato heals her, and tells her not to get hurt before battle. Just then, Korin detects enemies ahead, and bandits reveal themselves, admitting to planning an ambush. They demand valuables, considering the group outnumbered. Yusato thinks that they don't look scary, while Suzune is excited to see real bandits. The bandits, alarmed by the blue grizzly, plan to capture and skin it. Suzune then takes out one of the bandits with her thunder magic, and Yusato asks her to go wild as he can heal them. While she's attacking, Yusato commands her like a Pokemon, and Suzune is getting mad. Suzune uses her thunder magic to take out the other bandits, and Oroku confronts the bandit leader. Just then, some wild boars attack them, and Bluren protects Yusato, but he gets hit while trying to protect Suzune, and they fall into a river. Yusato notices that it's the same river which he fell during his training, and realizes that the waterfall is up ahead. They both fall down the waterfall, and we then cut to Suzune trying to wake up Yusato. She's trying to get him somewhere safe, but learns that he's fine, and she gets embarrassed. He then sees a scar on her face, and heals it. Yusato mentions that he never thought that he would be back here so soon, and he tells her about Rose dumping him into the forest to train. Later, Yusato notices that they don't have any food to last even one day, and Suzune thinks that they should prioritize escaping this dangerous forest. However, it's going to get dark soon, so Yusato thinks that they should camp the night, and try to find the way back tomorrow. Last time he slept on the tree branch, but Suzune mentions that she has never climbed a tree, and he thinks if she was born into a rich family. Just then, he spots a cave, and they decide to take shelter there. He asks her to change her wet clothes, and she asks him not to peek. Later, they catch some fish using Suzune's thunder magic, and use her ability to create fire, which they use to dry their clothes, and cook food. Yusato enjoys the fire, and he notices Suzune sitting alone who is feeling shy seeing his ripped body. Suzune then notices some animals, and Yusato mentions that these are venom monkeys. They are not aggressive, but she shouldn't touch them as they are venomous. However, she's already touching one of them, and it bites her. She gets poisoned, and Yusato heals her. Meanwhile, we see that Kazuki has learned that Yusato and Suzune went missing, and the king tells him that they will dispatch a search party tomorrow. Kazuki thinks it will be too late by then, and tries to head to them, but he's stopped by Rose. She tells him that Yusato is with her, and he will not die easily, so if he's fine, Suzune will also be fine. Back in the forest, Yusato and Suzune finish their dinner. Yusato is really grateful to have her, and notices that she's sleepy. He tells her that they should take turns, and he'll keep watch first, but Suzune asks him to sleep first as he must be tired after using all the healing magic, so he goes first. After some time it starts to rain, and Suzune learns that Yusato is still awake. She asks him how he feels about being summoned to this world, and wonders if he wants to go back home. Yusato does want to go home, but he also has a reason to stay here. Suzune tells him that she doesn't want to go back, as she prefers this world over her old one. 
There is nothing left for her in their old world, and she is willing to throw away her family and friends to stay here, as she has been waiting her whole life for a chance to free herself. Yusato tells her that he was also tired of his ordinary life, and thinks that they're not so different. When he first arrived here, he didn't want to hold them back, but now he wants to protect everyone as a member of the rescue squad. Suzune also wants to protect this place as a hero, and they both resolve to protect this world. Yusato then tells her that back in their old world he thought she was a perfect girl, and hard to approach, but Suzune mentions that she'd be rather close to him than admired from afar. Yusato gets embarrassed, and he pretends to go to sleep. The following morning they notice something in the forest, but it's just Bluren. Aruka comes after him, but he collapses due to fatigue. Yusato heals him, and learns that, while they were searching the forest for them, Bluren suddenly ran on his own, so they followed it. Suzune thinks that Bluren must have picked up Yusato's scent, and Bluren then heads to its old home. Yusato then tells them about how its parents were killed by a giant snake, and Bluren tries to leave this place. Suzune thinks that Bluren has decided to be by his side, and they should also head home. Later, we see that the king is glad to see both Yusato and Suzune safe, and apologize to them, but Yusato mentions that he's used to it, making the king surprised. However, seeing Rose he mentions that he used to go trekking in his old world. King then asks him about his training, and he mentions it's going well, but Yusato wonders if he has been conditioned by Rose on a psychological level. The minister then tells them to take rest, but asks Rose and Sigils to stay back. As Yusato walks back with Suzune, he wonders what they could be talking about, and just then Kazuki arrives with Celia. He was worried about them, and Celia tells them that Kazuki was prepared to go alone to look for them. Suzune teases him for being reckless, but Yusato reminds of her reckless behavior by getting bitten by a monkey, and Suzune stops him from revealing further. Later, Kazuki tells him that Rose told him Yusato will be alright, and he thinks that Rose has great faith in him. However, Yusato knows the true nature of Rose, and thinks Kazuki is so innocent. After that, Yusato and Suzune leave, and Celia thinks that Kazuki has gotten a lot closer to them. She wishes to be his close friend, and asks her to call by her name, to which Kazuki agrees. After that, we see King and the others discussing the training incident, where the party was attacked by wild boars just after the bandit attack. This indicates that the monsters are fleeing from something terrible, and they suspect it's the demon lord's army. Sigils thinks that if this is true, they will be well prepared unlike the last time, and the king asks him to ready their troops. Sigil leaves, and king requests Rose to find out how far the demon lord's army has reached, as she's the fastest in the kingdom. He also asks her to return to her post as battalion commander, but she refuses, as she bears more guilt than he thinks. King realizes that she has still not forgiven herself for the incident, and she tells him that although she has accepted the death of her subordinates, the scar that has been carved into her eye, will never let her forget. This is why she created the rescue squad, which focuses on saving lives rather than fighting. However, she has one more motive, which is to find a subordinate that won't die, and this is why her training is so hard. King wonders if she's referring to Yusato, and she tells him that Yusato has every skill that she's been looking for. He's someone who hates to lose, and keeps standing up to her no matter what she does. She's determined to make him an ideal healer, and takes off to the border. We then cut to the rescue squad house, where Tong tells Yusato that he has a note from Rose, which mentions that he doesn't have training tomorrow, instead he is asked to deliver a letter. Meanwhile, we see the Demon Lord's army building a bridge under the command of Amila, and the Black Knight teases her for being over-enthusiastic, but she tells him that she is the commander, so he should obey her. Black Knight doesn't really care, and leaves. Hiraluk comes in, and inquires about the completion of the bridge. Amila tells him that it will be done in a few more hours, and they can then begin the invasion of the Linger Kingdom. Just then, she gets a report about an enemy scout on the other side, but Amila asks them to leave it, as by the time they report it, their army will already be there. 
Suddenly, a tree comes flying in, and breaks the bridge. Amila wonders who could throw a tree from that distance, and is shocked to learn that Rose was the one who threw it. Rose thinks that breaking the bridge should buy them some time, and she runs back to the capital. We then cut to Yusato, who is trying to find the location to deliver the letter, and reaches the fruit stall, where the old lady offers him fruits for Blurin, but he tells her that he'll pick it up on his way back. He then reaches a building, where he meets Yururu, who realizes that Yusato is the new member of the rescue squad. She tells him that he's in the Fleur Clinic which is run by her and her brother Orga. She tells him that Orga is currently examining a patient, and Yusato is amazed to see him performing healing magic on a young boy. After that, Orga thanks him for delivering the letter, and he gets tense reading it. Meanwhile, Yusato asks Yururu about quitting the rescue squad, and she tells him it's mainly because she didn't want to worry her brother. She mentions about Rose's training, and tells him that she couldn't keep up with it. She also became afraid of Rose, and it seemed like Rose was desperate, but she seems much happier now, and Yusato thinks it's probably because she has got him as her new punching bag. Just then, a man calls Orga for an emergency for his friend who fell off the roof while fixing it, and two others are also injured. Orga asks Yusato to come with them, and after reaching there, Orga asks Yusato to take care of one of the injured. Yusato thinks that if war breaks out, he'll have to heal injuries more severe than this in the middle of battle, and he can't seem to focus. Orga tells him to calm down, as he has the power to heal, so it doesn't matter where he's treating the injured, and all he needs to do is believe in himself. Yusato then focuses, and heals the injured. Later, Orga thanks him for his help, and asks him to drop by to lend a hand whenever he's free. They then bid farewell, and Orga tells Yururu that they've been summoned to go to war. He thinks that Yusato doesn't have any battlefield experience, but he believes in Rose's decision, and he'll give his best to do everything he can. Meanwhile, we see Yusato picking up the fruits for Blurin, and on his way, a cat girl approaches him. She tells him that he's the only one who could see it, and so this is a future he can change. Yusato then sees a glimpse of the future, where he sees the demon army winning, and Black Knight kills Suzune and Kazuki. The girl then tells him that she has done him a great favor, for which he'll have to repay her, and she runs off, leaving Yusato in shock. After that, Yusato tries to find the girl, but she hides from him. As he inquires a guard about the fox girl, Rose appears, and the guard runs off. He teases her about the guard still being afraid of her, but she doesn't take it well, and lifts him up, grabbing his head. He then learns that she went to the border for scouting, and tells him that the demon army is trying to cross the river by building a bridge, but she has destroyed the bridge, so it should buy them some time. He teases her again by asking if a scout is supposed to do that, and she lifts him again by grabbing his head. Later, Yusato asks her about the fox girl, and Rose mentions that she appeared two years ago. She's just twelve, and she made it here all by herself, evading bandits and kidnappers, as demi-humans are extremely valuable to them. Rose tells him that demi-humans have aptitude for rare magic, and he wonders if they possess abilities to show the future. Rose mentions that there are demi-human who could use precognition, but they are rare, and usually they will be guarded well in their beast land. Rose wonders why he wanted to know, and he tells her that he was just reading about it in a book, but thinks that the fox girl must have the precognition ability. After that, we see Rose reporting the incident to the king, and they realize that the demon invasion will begin once they complete building the new bridge. The king decides to inform the soldiers and citizens about the invasion, and he asks Sigils to bring Kazuki and Suzune. We then see Kazuki and Suzune on the way to meet the king, and they meet Celia on their way. She looks worried, and leaves after greeting them, and Suzune wonders if something happened between her and Kazuki. Meanwhile, back at the rescue team house, Yusato can't fall asleep due to the vision which the girl had shown him, and wonders if she wanted him to prevent what he saw by changing the future. Just then, he sees some lights floating outside the window, and learns that it's Kazuki. 
He's surprised to see him at this hour, and Kazuki tells him that the king informed him about the demon army invasion. Although he was expecting it, he couldn't picture himself fighting, and ran out of the castle. When he went for training, he was scared when he saw the monsters, and he realized how lightly he had been taking everything. He's scared about fighting the demons, but the people of this kingdom are counting on him, and he can't stand it. Yusato tells him that he's a cool guy, and tells him that he doesn't have to live up to those expectations. Kazuki asks how Yusato feels, and he mentions that he's scared, but he'll still fight the demon army to save the people of this kingdom, and that includes Kazuki as well. He tells him that he'll still be his friend, even if he doesn't fight, and Kazuki resolves to fight to help his friends. He thanks Yusato, and leaves. Just then, Suzune appears, and she wonders why he isn't surprised to see her. He tells her that she must have seen Kazuki worried, and followed him. There's a part of him that doesn't want Kazuki to fight, and she asks if he feels the same for her. He tells her that he does, but her case is different as she wants to continue living here. She then bids him farewell, and heads back to the castle. The following day, the king announces about the demon army invasion, and they plan to intercept them in the grasslands. He motivates the soldier by mentioning that they have the support of heroes, and the rescue squad. He believes in his soldiers, and is sure that they will emerge victorious. After that, we see Kazuki visiting Celia before tomorrow's battle, and she hopes that he comes back safe. Meanwhile, we see Yururu who is charmed by Blurin, and wants to pet him, but Blurin doesn't let her touch him. Just then, Kukuru appears, but he doesn't let her pet him either, and she's mad. Yusato then hears Orga's cry who fell down carrying the goods, and goes to help him. Orga then tells him that it's Yururu's first battle as well, and she's just trying to hide her anxiety. Just then, Yusato gets called to see Rose in her room, and he thinks that he has never been called up to her room before. Yusato then meets Rose, who tells him that they won't immediately go to the front lines as there won't be many wounded people at the start of the battle, and advises him not to save the wrong people. Yusato wonders if she's talking about healing the enemy, but she tells him not to go around healing everyone. For instance, if he tries to heal someone who's still fighting despite being injured, he'll be only getting in his way. Their troops will be mixed with enemies, so she wants him to use his judgment to save the right people. She gives him his rescue team uniform, so that he would stand out on the battlefield, and he tries it out right away. She warns him not to take his life for granted, and tells him that being part of the rescue squad means that he has to save himself as well. He promises her to save everyone including himself, and thinks that no matter what he saw in the vision, he is determined not to let Kazuki or Suzune die. After that, we see the rescue team heading towards the camp, and Yusato asks Rose about the demons. She tells him that they are demi-humans with twisted horns on their heads, and they're physically stronger and have more mana, surpassing any human beings. Not only their officers, but even their regular soldiers are strong. Rose mentions that she never expected some kid who got dragged here to become a monster like him, and Yusato thinks it's ironic coming from her, who has put him through all those training. The story then goes back to five years in the past, where the king discusses the sighting of the demon army with Rose and others. He asks to assign guards to the merchants who are traveling in the grassland for their safety, and hopes to avoid conflict with them. Later, Sigil asks Rose about what she thinks about the demon's movement, and she thinks there's a possibility that they will invade. Sigil's then plans to prepare his forces to deploy at any time, in case the worst-case scenario happens, and leaves, while Rose thinks that she should be prepared as well. Just then, a girl calls out for her, but Rose hits her in the head for interrupting her thinking, and the girl thinks that her boss is way too cruel. She is the deputy commander named Al, and she asks Rose about the demons, but Rose smacks her again for eavesdropping on their top secret meetings. Rose thinks that the demons are up to no good, and Al mentions that if it comes to that they will send them back home. Rose thinks that she's underestimating the enemy, and for this she'll be overseeing her afternoon's training, which makes Al worried. 
They then reach their training base, where Rose mentions that she'll get them in shape, which shocks them, and they all think that All is responsible for this. All tells them that they all look weak, and could use some training, but they don't take it well and beat her up. She asks Rose for help, but she doesn't care. One week later, King tells Rose that the demons are attacking the monsters in their territory, and they are a highly trained group of soldiers. He asks her to investigate the demons, and if necessary, she can use force. Later, Rose plans to search around the darkness of Linger Forest with her troops, and mentions that she was told that they're only about thirty. All tries to encourage them, but they all scold her for being the reason for the vigorous training last week, and starts fighting with her. Rose then tells them that they should meet this mission fully prepared, and she'll be joining them. Everyone is happy to learn that she'll be joining them, as they don't have to worry about injuries. Later, we see them in the forest, where they didn't find anything today, and all plans to explore the west side tomorrow, which is more dangerous, so they'll leave their horses there. After that, they decide to take turns watching the fire, and Rose decides to go first. Later, Rose notices that All is still awake, and she asks Rose why she chose her as the deputy commander, as she's pretty average compared to everyone else in the group. All thinks that she just writes reports, and just an errand runner, but Rose thinks that it's an important job, which she hasn't screwed up till now. If she continues like this, she'll hand over the commander title to her, which shocks All, and she denies it, as she thinks this could cause a conflict in their group. She tells Rose that she always stands for what she feels is right, even if others are against it, and that's how she spent her knighthood. Rose recalls that she was a strong knight who didn't listen to her superiors, and then she met Rose, continuing to do the same, but before Rose everything was meaningless, as she chased her down even when she tried to flee past the border, and when she tried to hit Rose, she lost so hard that she lost her consciousness. After that, all she wanted was to beat Rose, because she hated to lose. Also, she never had someone look after her until the very end without giving up, and it made her happy. All mentions that Rose understands everyone the best, so she's the only one who can be their commander. Rose then flicks her forehead, and mentions that she wouldn't hand over the command to someone who is unworthy. She chose all because she doesn't give up when she puts her mind to something, and if she keeps doing what she does the others will follow her, but Rose will always be their leader. She then asks all to keep watch on the next shift, and tells others that they should get sleep as well. We then learn that all the members were awake, and they tell all that they trust her. She realizes that they were eavesdropping their conversation, and chases them to kick their ass. The following day, we see them scouting the west side of the forest, and they find some monster blood and footprints. After that, they find the demons, and notice them capturing the hunted beasts. The leader of the demon soldier spots them, and Rose asks them about their mission, but he refuses to tell her. She tells him that they can avoid conflict if they return back, but he plans to kill them all. Rose then puts all in command, and both the demons and human army start to fight. The leader tries to use a wind attack on Rose, but she hits him before he could launch the attack. The demon then uses wind blades to attack her, but she dodges them, and she throws some trees at him. She uses them as cover to get closer to him, and manages to land a hit, but it's not effective. He thinks that he has never seen such a strong human, and then surrounds her with a wind barrier which has blades mixed in it, but Rose passes right through it, and heals herself. The demon leader realizes that she's a healer, and her high-speed healing combined with physical strength makes her a strong fighter. He then introduces himself as Nero Argens, and Rose introduces herself. Nero then takes out his sword, mentioning that he is going to kill her, and they continue to fight. Meanwhile, Rose's squad thinks that the demons are quite strong, but they work together to overpower the demons. On the other hand, Rose thinks that Nero's demon sword is imbued with curse, so she shouldn't let it touch her. Nero tries to attack her, but she sends him flying. Nero wasn't expecting such trouble during his monster hunt, and he tells Rose that her group is the most troublesome group he has ever encountered. Since there are no true heroes among humans, 
he never thought that someone like her could wield such a power. He thinks that she's the biggest threat to their plan now, and mentions that the time when demon kind fear before humans will soon end when his lord will awaken. He's merciless and cruel, but he'll bring prosperity to the demon kind. So, for that lord he's going to destroy her with her companions, and use the power of the sword. The demon soldiers then fight with no regard to their life, they start killing the squad members by sacrificing themselves, and Nero doesn't let Rose help them. The squad members are in a panic to see the mad behavior of demons, and they get killed one by one. Rose thinks that she won't be able to make it in time, and she tries to attack Nero, but she loses her composure. Nero can easily read her moves, and he cuts her eye with the sword. The cursed swords temporarily block the mana flow, and due to this her injury can't be healed right away. Her squad members ask her help to heal them, but she is unable to make it due to her fight with Nero. With half her vision gone, she struggles to fight, and is about to be killed by Nero, but all saves her by taking the attack. Rose notices that all her squad members are dead, and remembers how excited they were before this mission, as they all believed in Rose. She thinks that all of this happened because she believed too much in her power, and just then, Nero tries to deal the final blow. However, Rose catches his sword, and she starts punching him in anger. She pins him down to a tree using his own sword, and she wants to kill him. Just then, Amila appears, and we learn that she's the only one who Nero tried to save. Seeing her save her master, Rose is reminded of all, and she lets them go. Rose reaches all, and tries to heal her, but it doesn't work. All mentions that she has no regrets, and she was happy to fight as her squad member. All dies, and Rose cries seeing the dead bodies of all her squad members. The scene then cuts to Rose reporting about the battle to the king, and mentions about the demon lord invasion in the near future. She then requests the king to remove her as battalion commander, and revoke her knighthood. After that, we see Rose returning to the squad house, and she meets the parents of one of her squad members. Rose apologizes to them for his death, but the parents mention that they are thankful that she brought them to her, and mentions that their son had a satisfying look on his face, so they are grateful to her. After that, we see Sigil visiting Rose a month later, and mentions that he heard the king visiting Rose. He wonders if the king managed to convince her to return, but she mentions that unlike Sigils, he came here to make sure she's alive. However, she thinks that she's better off dead, and Sigil grabs her for speaking such nonsense. He notices that the wound from the swords are starting to heal, and asks why isn't she healing her eye, but to Rose the scar is the proof of her failure, and she sees it as her punishment so that she never forgets their deaths. She doesn't plan to die as all saved her life, and wonders what she should do next. She then imagines all, who tells her that things change, and she should accept this, but the fact that Rose was their leader will never change. Her last words for Rose was to become the person they all admired, and Rose starts crying remembering all of them, but she mentions that this will be the last time she's going to show weakness. She vows to become the person they all admire, and she plans to create a force that won't let anyone die during the battle. She thinks that she'll need at least five members, and two should be healers. She also wants someone like her, who would fight by her side without dying, and we then cut back to the present where she tells Yusato that she's glad to find him. Yusato is surprised, and mentions he never expected a compliment from Rose. She tells him that the world needs healers like him, and he has all the traits she wants in a healer. He's capable of something that no one else can do, and she's sure that he won't die. Meanwhile, we see that the demons are finished with the bridge, but Amila thinks that they are a little behind schedule. Black Knight is glad to see that the wait is over, but he thinks that it will be over in an instant as their opponents are all human. Amila mentions that he should not underestimate the opponents, especially the kidnappers who steal the wounded to heal them, and the Black Knight thinks that this could be fun if they actually pose a challenge. After that, we see Yusato waking up in an army camp, and he meets Suzune outside. She's excited about her armor which is designed to support her thunder magic, 
and it doesn't restrict her movement. Yusato thinks that she was more into cute outfits, but she mentions that in her old world she used to grow cactus, and it calmed her heart. Now she wants Yusato to calm her heart, and tries to develop a plot with him. Just then Kazuki appears, saving Yusato from unsheathing his Excalibur, and he leaves with Suzune. After that, we see sigils informing everyone about the battle plan, and they plan to launch a surprise magic attack as soon as the demon army appears. The heroes will engage the enemy soldiers with the knights, and if possible take their commander's head. Later, Suzune asks Kazuki to not push himself, and he tells her not to worry about it. He mentions that he knows that she's feeling uneasy, and that's why she was using Yusato as a distraction. Suzune tells him that she's a bit worried, but she's also excited, and Kazuki thinks that she has changed from how she was in their old world. Just then, they notice the demon army on the horizon, and they attack them with some spells along with the mages. However, it was just an illusion, and the real army is coming from the southwest. The heroes go to face them, and meanwhile, we see Rose asking the rescue team to bring in the injured, while Orga and Yururu will be on duty here in the tent to heal the injured, but she asks them to run if anything goes wrong. She tells Yusato that the two of them will go to fight once the number of injured starts escalating, and until then they will be healing here. After that, we see Yururu wishing Yusato the best as he'll be going to the battlefield, and just then, Tong brings in some injured. Yusato then tries to heal one of the injured, and the soldier tells him that he was thrown by a giant snake. Yusato wonders if it's something like the snake he fought before, and we then see some soldiers fighting the giant snake, but they are no match against it. The Black Knight thinks that the humans are really weak, and he didn't need to come there. Just then, a soldier stabs him, but it doesn't affect the Black Knight, and the soldiers start bleeding instead. The Black Knight's wounds heal, and the soldier tries to crawl out thinking he needs to inform others about this. The Black Knight tries to kill the soldier, but one of the rescue team squad members manages to save him, and Black Knight thinks that this must be the kidnappers that Amila mentioned. After that, he notices some lightning in the distance, and heads there. Meanwhile, Rose tells Yusato that it's time for them to join the battle, and they ask Orga and Yururu to take care of things here. On their way, Rose tells Yusato about hearing about an enemy in black armor who is said to have some kind of dangerous magic, and Yusato recalls about the future he saw. Rose sees that Yusato is worried, and knows that he can't kill anyone. She then tells him a secret technique to defeat an enemy, and Yusato wonders if she just made that up for him. After that, they both go in separate directions, and Yusato notices a soldier about to be killed, but he saves him before the demon can land the final blow. Some demons try to block him, but he evades them. Meanwhile, we see that Rose is also saving soldiers on the battlefield, while the heroes are also fighting the demons with other soldiers. Kazuki tells Suzune that he has heard about a powerful snake monster on the field, but Suzune thinks that right now they should focus on clearing the path to the enemy commander. Just then, the Black Knight comes there with some demon soldiers, and we see that some soldiers manage to stab him. Kazuki wonders why isn't Black Knight resisting their attacks, and just then, the soldier who attacked him starts bleeding. Kazuki tries to attack him, but Suzune tries to stop him, and he misses. However, Kazuki receives the damage in the place where he attacked Black Knight, and Suzune realizes that Black Knight has the power to reflect any damage done to his armor. Black Knight is surprised that Suzune managed to figure this out so soon, and he hopes that the two of them can put up a good fight. Meanwhile, we see Yusato having a sudden headache, and the scene of his friends dying plays repeatedly in his mind. Just then, a demon tries to attack him, but he dodges the attack. The demon tries to attack him again, but he's saved by the soldier whom he saved before. He asks him about the location of the heroes, and heads there. Meanwhile, Suzune devises a plan for an attack, and Kazuki thinks that it's reckless, but she mentions that if anything happens Yusato can heal them. Black Knight then uses his armor to attack them, 
but Suzune uses her magic to create a dust to obstruct his vision, and she attacks Black Knight along with Kazuki. However, their attacks still get reflected back, but Suzune notices that the attack she made on the back didn't reflect. She concludes that Black Knight can't reflect the attacks he can't see, and she plans to attack again with Kazuki. They charge in deflecting the incoming attacks, and Suzune uses her high speed to confuse the Black Knight, while Kazuki uses his magic to blind him. Suzune then stabs him through the neck, and thinks that he can't reflect this attack. She asks Kazuki to attack as well, and he does so. However, to Suzune's surprise, he reflects back their attacks, and we learn that earlier Black Knight didn't reflect the attack on his back on purpose to mislead them. He tells them that there's no one in the world that could hurt him, and Suzune collapses along with Kazuki, while Yusato is still on his way to them. We then cut to a scene from the past, where Kazuki congratulates Suzune for successfully bringing changes to the regulations, and Suzune mentions that it was only possible because of Kazuki's support. As they move forward, Kazuki remembers that he forgot his bag, and decides to go back. Suzune goes ahead, and finds Yusato. She recalls how happy she was when she got summoned to this world, as she could start over as a new version of herself, but Yusato was different, and he always knew what to do. Above all, she was happy that he accepted her for who she really was, and she believed everything would be fine as long as she has Kazuki and Yusato. Black Knight then tries to deal the final blow to Suzune, but just then Yusato rushes in, and punches Black Knight. He's shocked to see Kazuki and Suzune in such a state, and starts healing them. Meanwhile, we see Black Knight mentioning that it hurt, and we see the face armor ripped. We learn that it's a girl, and Suzune is surprised that Yusato's attack worked against it. Black Knight rushes in to attack them, and Yusato runs away carrying Suzune and Kazuki. The Black Knight catches up to them, and Suzune tells him about the situation with Black Knight. Yusato then resolves to fight the Black Knight, and charges in. Black Knight attacks him using her armor, and he deflects her attack. He notices that his attack is not being reflected, and Black Knight is surprised to see this. Yusato then punches her again, and they engage in a fight. Meanwhile, Kazuki wakes up, and Suzune tells him about the situation. They see the Black Knight's armor piercing through Yusato's hand, but it melts away, and they wonder if those attacks don't work against Yusato. They realize that Yusato is in a constant healing state, where he's healing his enemy with every strike. Suzune realizes that Black Knight weakness is healing magic, and her attack is not working on Yusato because his fists are covered in healing magic. So, the damage that Black Knight is taking is purely from the power of his fists, and we learn that this is why the show is called the wrong way to use healing magic. Black Knight then powers up to use its ultimate move, but Yusato tells his friends not to worry as he's going to finish this fight with his next move. Yusato and Black Knight clash their attack, but in the end Yusato manages to hit her with his ultimate healing punch, and the demon girl behind the armor falls to the ground. After that, we learn that the demons fled after Black Knight was defeated, and Suzune asks him where he learned that move. He mentions that it's a special technique that Rose taught him, so that he can fight the enemies without killing them. They will only feel the pain of his attack, and Suzune thinks that he has really fallen under Rose's influence. She thanks him for saving them, and just then, Kazuki reports about the snake monster moving to the front line. Yusato goes to join them, but just then Rose appears. She mentions that she heard that heroes were about to die, and he explains about what happened. Rose is impressed that he took Black Knight down, and saved the heroes. She tells him that the battlefield is now under control, so things should be fine here, and they should head back to the camp. He bids farewell to his friends, and heads back with Rose. Meanwhile, we see that Amila is shocked to learn that Black Knight was defeated by a guy in white dress, and she decides to withdraw for now. She asks Hiroluk to call the monster snake back, but he sees that the heroes have already engaged in a battle with the snake. After some time of battle, the heroes defeat the snake, and in the rescue camp, 
we see Yusato healing a soldier. Rose tells him that the enemy has started to retreat, and they will back down as well to prepare for the next attack. She then tells him that they won the battle because he saved the heroes, as she wouldn't have made it in time to save them. If the heroes had died, then it might have been them on the losing side, and tells him that he did well. Yusato is moved to tears, and mentions that he was really scared on the battlefield, but he is glad that he was able to help them. Rose recalls about the memories of her previous squad, and thanks him for coming back to her alive. Yusato then starts passing out due to low mana, and Rose tells him to rest for now. We then cut to Yusato with Blurin, where he mentions that they were summoned to the castle after he got back from the battle, and he was told that he'll be getting a reward from the king. Yusato was so nervous that Rose had smacked him in the middle of the ceremony, but he was happy to get a reward as he never got any in his old world. Just then, he's informed that he's been asked to pay a visit to the castle, and Yusato wonders why he was called again. As he goes through the town, people surround him, recognizing him as the rescue squad member, and they start thanking him and giving him goods for saving them. After that, he reaches the castle, where the guard Aruru thanks him for his efforts in the battle, and then he meets with the king and sigils, who need his help in interrogating the Black Knight. Although she has been answering them willingly, they are yet to get critical info on their magic powers, and Black Knight told them that she'll provide the info if she can meet Yusato. We then see Yusato heading to meet with Black Knight, and Suzune has joined them as well. Yusato wonders how he was able to defeat the Dark Knight, and Sigils tells him that Black Knight has an affinity towards dark magic, so her magic was cancelled out by his healing magic. Yusato realizes that she took all his punches directly, and must be really hurt, so he rushes to see her. Black Knight tells him that she just wanted to see the face of the guy who messed her up so bad, and Yusato goes inside the cell. He asks her to give her hand, and starts healing her. Black Knight gets a feeling that she never got before, and she's moved to tears. We then cut to Yusato receiving training by Rose, and this time she wants him to dodge her punch, while Yusato thinks that he's going to be murdered. She tells him that his healing magic wouldn't work against curse items, and he should learn to dodge that. Rose then throws him away, and charges at him, giving a punch to his stomach, which knocks him out. After he wakes up, Rose is ready to go again, but Yusato looks scared. Three days pass, and we see Yusato telling about his training to Black Knight, while she wonders what he's doing here. Yusato asks her what she is going to do from now onwards, but she tells him that it's not up for her to decide due to her current situation. We then see King asking Rose to do something for him, and meanwhile, we see Yusato meeting up with Kazuki who is training. Princess Celia is also there to watch him so that he doesn't overexert himself, and Yusato feels jealous. Kazuki tells him that he learned from Suzune that he made Black Knight cry, and Yusato tells him that he was just healing her. Celia then thanks him as they were able to get all the info from the Black Knight, and she heard that if he was not there in the battlefield they would have lost. Kazuki then starts to thank him for saving him, but stops when he realizes about Celia hearing it. Celia asks him to reveal the details of the battlefield, and Yusato realizes that he hid the fact the Black Knight almost killed him. Meanwhile, we see that Black Knight is visited by Rose, and she gives Black Knight two options. One is to spend the rest of her life in the cell, and the second is that the Rose will take her under her wing to change her into an upright demon. Rose smacks her on the head, and mentions that King dislikes killing the prisoners of the war. Also, if they kill her, their enemy will desire revenge, which will be hard to deal with. Rose then puts a collar on her which suppresses her mana, and mentions that watching over her in prison would be a waste of resources, so she'll turn her into an upright demon, while Black Knight wonders that she didn't even make a choice which she was offered, but Rose tells her that she has no right to refuse. We then see Yusato training with Blurin, and just then, Rose appears with Black Knight. Yusato is shocked, and Rose tells him that she's going to reform her. She'll train her to be an upright demon, and Yusato gives his condolences to the Black Knight. Later, Yusato reports to Rose about Black Knight, 
and mentions that she had some complaints, but calmed down after the bath. She's now sleeping, and Rose thinks that she'll grasp the situation once she starts training. Rose then tells him that the king is hoping to form alliances with other countries to stand against the demon lord's army, and he wants to send Usado as one of the representatives of the kingdom. The following day in town, a few ladies greet him during his shopping, and after that, he runs into Suzune. Just then, he spots the fox girl who gave him the premonition, and catches her. She tells him that she's waiting for him to pay her back, and she wants him to save her mother. Suzune appears, and she's excited to see the fox-eared girl. The fox girl introduces herself as a fox beast man named Amako, and decides to have a talk with him. Meanwhile, we see Black Knight training, and she gets mocked by the rescue squad members for being too slow for a demon. She gets tired, and falls down. Just then, Rose appears, and smacks her for slacking off, and Black Knight starts running again. After that, we see Yusato with Suzune and Amako in the rescue squad house, and he tells her that they can talk here as everyone has gone for training, while Suzune wants to pet her so badly. Yusato then asks about the vision which she showed him, and Amako tells him that if she hadn't shown him that vision this country would have been destroyed. She has the magic to see into the future, and mentions that she was looking for a healer who could come with her to Beastlands to save her mother. She left Beastlands because only humans can use healing magic, but she couldn't find anyone who could save her mom. Yusato wonders why she didn't ask Orga and Yururu, but she tells him that they can't fight, and she also had a vision of Rose declining her request. When she saw Yusato she knew that he would come with her, and that's why she showed him the future. She asks him to come with her to the Beastlands to save her mom, but Suzune thinks it would be difficult as Yusato is important to this country. Yusato tells them that he has received the mission to deliver letters, so this might be possible, and decides to speak about it with Rose first. Rose is shocked to learn about Amaka's abilities, and mentions that the beast men would attack them if they knew that they were harboring Amaka. She thinks that his wish might be possible, but they would need to speak with the king first. Yusato then goes back to inform Amako that it will take some time, but she was able to predict what he was going to say, and thanks him. Later, we see the rescue squad team having their dinner, but Black Knight is still hesitant to eat. Yusato tells her to eat, as she needs energy for the training, and then gives her a diary to log her daily activities. We then see Black Knight decides to use the diary, and she logs her about her daily trainings. On day 10 she hears some voices in the forest, and sees Yusato getting punched by Rose, and getting back up. Rose yells at him for not being able to dodge her attack, and she goes at him again. Although Yusato initially manages to dodge a punch, he gets kicked by Rose. Black Knight gets worried, however, Yusato is happy that he was able to dodge an attack, and Rose asks Yusato to return to training with Black Knight. Later, he asks Black Knight her name, and she's a bit embarrassed as not many people know her name, but tells him that her name is Felm. Just then, Bluren appears, and decides to run with him, while Black Knight feels angry that he didn't use her name, and runs ahead at full speed. Later at dinner, Yusato tells Rose that Felm collapsed due to running at full speed, but he healed her, and put her to bed. Other members think that he must have made her train hard, and he's not normal for a human, but Yusato tells them that he's far more human than Rose. Just then, a spoon flies past him, cutting his cheek, and it gets stuck to a wall. We learn that it was thrown by Rose who seems angry, and they all calm down. After that, we see Felm sneaking up to hear the conversation between Rose and Yusato, where Rose tells him about the meeting with King, and asks him to bring Amako. Following morning, we see Felm running away from the rescue squad house, and we then cut to Yusato and Amako meeting with the King. The King thanks Amako for saving his kingdom, and he has considered Yusato's request. He mentions that Yusato will be visiting various countries, and he has made the arrangement so that they'll be able to visit Beastland. After that, Welsi tells him that he'll be visiting four countries, which are, Lukvist, the City of Magic, Samariarl, the Country of Prayer, Mirelark, the Country of Water, and finally, Beastlands. 
She'll accompany them to Lukvist along with Suzune and Kazuki, but after that they will head on their own, and they can have two knights with them. Welsi wonders if he has any recommendation for the knights, and we then see Yusato asking Aruku to be their guard. He accepts, and when Welsi asks him for the second knight, Yusato points to Blurin. We then cut to Felm running away, but Rose catches her. Rose knows that she heard her conversation with Yusato last night, and thought that she'd be going to inform the Demon Lord's army about this, but realizes that she just wanted to accompany Yusato. Felm tells that she's tired of all the training, but Rose smacks her, and asks her to start running. Later, Yusato is impressed that Felm tried to escape, and mentions that he's leaving tomorrow. Felm seems upset, and leaves, while Yusato is too dumb to realize that he has rizzed her up. Rose appears, and advises him that healing magic is often looked down upon, so if he ever comes across someone with that kind of mindset, he should beat them up. This journey to deliver the letters will change him for better or worse, and she expects great things from him. Rose leaves, and Yusato is moved by her words. The following day, we see Yururu and Orga wishing him on his journey, and he takes off with Amaka. We then see Rose taking Felm somewhere, and Yusato looks forward to his next adventure. This is where the video ends, hope you enjoyed this recap. Thanks for watching.